live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit. Local 4 News at 11 starts now. A tense debate at tonight's Gross Point School Board meeting. Overall, I think this resolution is garbage. It's crazy what we're doing to our kids. We know that our schools are safe. They're the one of the most safest places for our kids to be. How the board voted on a controversial resolution that would relax quarantining rules in the district. Outrage tonight over a controversial speaker forces the cancellation of a police seminar in Novi. Well, we begin with breaking news along the, no the Northville Livonia border where a shootout erupts on Haggerty. Police saying road rage is to blame. Tim Pamplin is there with an eye cam. Tim. Well, look at southbound on Haggerty. That's Northville on the right, Livonia on the left. They've got this shut down at Seven Mile. More evidence markers in the middle of Haggerty here. Yet another batch of bullet casings. This crime scene is large. Three distinct locations, one outside the AMC movie theater and then another one out front of J. Alexander's. Like you say, the police is working theory is this was road rage. Occupants of two cars exchanging gunfire. Bridget and Bruce Goldman were just trying to enjoy supper at J. Alexander's. They locked up everything, look at these split. They say when police arrived on the scene, they shut the entire area down. Having dinner and then all of a sudden the police came, surrounded the place. Livonia police tell us that after the exchange of gunfire, the two vehicles left the area. They are now checking area hospitals to see if there's any gunshot victims arrived at their facilities. Now, police are asking you if you were in the area of Seven Mile and Haggerty, saw any of this going down, please do give them a call. They need some help on this one. That is a scene along the Northfield Livonia border with an eight cam. Tim Pamplin, local four. Okay, Tim, now to controversy surrounding a police seminar that was scheduled to be held next month at the Oak Point Church in Novi. The event canceled after a firestorm erupted yesterday as people learned of who one of the keynote speakers would be. Let's bring in Jason Colthorpe live in Novi tonight. Jason, many are describing this speaker as someone who trains people to kill. It, there's no denying that, Kim. However, it is difficult to put any one label on retired Army Ranger Colonel Dave Grossman. Uh, according to his own website, Killology, it's described that he's written several books, and for the last 23 years or so, he's toured the country speaking at seminars for police, military, mental health providers, school safety organizations, and the like. But for the average civilian to hear his thoughts on killing, can be jarring. If you fully prepare yourself, in most cases, killing is just not that big a deal. Retired Colonel Dave Grossman sounds pretty cavalier about taking a human life in several clips circulating the internet. But the executive director of the Michigan Association of Chiefs of Police says clips like that and this are taken out of context. There's gunfight, bad guys down, I'm alive. Finally get home at the end of the incident and they all say, the best sex I've had in months. There's not a whole lot of perks that come with this job. You find one, relax, and enjoy it. <laughs> He's teaching the psychology of how to kill. Walter Kreider saw three of Grossman's seminars during his 27 years with Michigan State Police in their full context. When we talk about creating situations uh, of killing, that's just not appropriate. I mean. There's, there are other avenues in terms of being able to accomplish the objective, and the objective is public safety, you know, protecting our public. Others felt it would be inappropriate for someone touting a company name of Killology to speak at a church. That led to calls and online comments to Oak Point Church in Novi, the host. And after talking with the Police Chiefs Association, both decided it was best to cancel. The MACP told me Grossman was being brought in specifically to talk about helping cops work through the trauma and psychological effects of shootings. Kreider also pointed out it's uh, when it comes to Grossman's message, it's just more suited for military rather than police. Now, as for this event that was scheduled to happen at the church behind me here, again, it is canceled. However, it could be rescheduled and it could be rescheduled with Grossman. The head of the Chiefs Association tells me there's an effort right now to get Grossman and his critics together somehow to see if they can get past this controversy. And if that happens, the event could be back on. Kimberly. So it could be rescheduled. So, Jason, if, if that happens, is the church willing to host it again? The church wouldn't comment on that, uh, just that for now it's 
it's canceling what was scheduled, but it did point out that it has a good relationship with local police and the Chiefs Association. And uh, from there, they wouldn't say if Grossman's involved, whether they would host it, just that right now, no deal. No deal. Kim. Okay. Jason, thanks. Now to a contentious school board meeting tonight in Gross Point as the board votes to change up some of its current COVID protocols. Mara McDonald in Gross Point Farms. And Mara, the board is changing the six-foot social distancing rule. Devin, it is. It is following CDC guidance, which says now that three feet of social distancing inside schools is okay, but they're also tweaking other COVID protocols. And this meeting, it got tense. Take a look. You don't even trust us with the educational decisions that are in the best interest of our students. The thing that we've been hired to do. A divided community had a lot to say about the changes the board was considering tonight. The district is following CDC guidelines and shifting social distancing in school from six to three feet. But it's also decided that for students deemed in close contact with a COVID positive student, quarantine will go from 14 days down to 10. And students who have been in close contact can get a rapid COVID test on day five after their exposure and if negative, return in seven days. What is being suggested is a balanced mitigation strategy. It's a balanced mitigation strategy that we're looking for so that we can maintain some degree of safety, but also um, try to eliminate some of the collateral damage. The clerical staff doesn't agree with the changes with regard to close contacts. Nobody should be testing on a quarantine. After listening to hours of public comment on the issue, the board voted 6-1 in favor. Okay, the resolution passes 6-1. Back here live tonight, important to note that the state of Michigan has allowed each individual school district to chart its own path as far as what it wants for COVID-19 protocols. However, what the state has done is issued a blanket mandate for high school athletics. Gross Point will have its own COVID-19 policies in school, but will continue to follow the MHSAA athletic policies. We're live in Gross Point Farms tonight. I'm Mara McDonald. Back to you. One district of so many facing these kinds of decisions. All right, Mara. Other coronavirus developments tonight. We expect new guidelines from the White House for fully vaccinated people. President Biden will speak about the pandemic tomorrow. It's expected he'll address if fully vaccinated people need to wear masks outdoors. The CDC announcing summer camp guidelines saying kids should be kept in small groups with distancing and as much outdoor activity as possible. Michigan, meanwhile, continues to see falling case numbers as the state reports 6,524 new cases and 35 more deaths over the past two days. Temperatures dropping into the 40s overnight, but warming into the 80s by tomorrow afternoon. Then we could possibly even break the record or come really close, right? We yes, we can, uh, Kim. In fact, the record tomorrow, 84. And if we get to 82, which is our forecast high, it's going to be the warmest day that we have seen this year and the warmest that we've been since September of 2020. So we were a far cry from that today. Our best temperature was 56 this afternoon, or I should say early in the evening. Now we're down to 45, and this is likely as cold as we're going to get. We may drop a degree or two here in the next hour. And then we're going to start warming. So we should wake up tomorrow to temperatures that are in the mid 50s. And then we are on our way. It, low 80s is what we're expecting for highs later on into the afternoon. That will be the warmest temperature of the forecast period as well. And then we start cooling down as we head towards the upcoming weekend. You can see averages this time of year, low, or I should say mid 60s. So we're almost 20 degrees better than that tomorrow. And we will stay above average through Thursday, Friday, the only day below average. But we got to talk rain and storms, which are coming with some of these warm temperatures, and we'll tell you when to expect those in just a few minutes, guys. All right, Ben. 2020 census results are finally out, and despite population growth here in Michigan, we are going to be losing a congressional seat, as many assumed. Data from last year's census shows Michigan's population grew by 2% over the last decade. However, because other states had more growth, Michigan will be one of seven states to lose a House seat. Likely pitting, in fact, two sitting U.S. representatives against each other next time around.
And so you're going to have not only general elections where you could have two congressional candidates running against each other, but two sitting incumbents in a primary running against each other. Um, just again, because of how these districts snowball and change, um, it means everyone is affected by this loss of the seat. The new independent redistricting commission is deciding the new legislative district boundaries. The new maps will be in effect in time for the August 2022 primary. A Livingston County man is now facing charges in the death of his two month old son. 25 year old Joshua Woy is charged with murder as well as child abuse. Back in June of 2019, his infant son was found dead inside his home. An autopsy found the baby suffered a skull fracture and a fractured right arm. Woy faces life in prison if convicted. An opponent challenges Detroit Mayor Mike Duggan's ballot eligibility. The former deputy mayor during the Kwame Kilpatrick administration, Anthony Adams, filed this challenge. He says Duggan shouldn't be on the ballot because he failed to update a fundraising disclosure in 2018. I'm very confident that uh, he will be removed from the ballot and he will once again have to try to mount uh, a run-in campaign. So we believe we've done the right thing and we just see this as an attempt to not have to face Mayor Duggan. Detroit City Clerk Janice Winfrey and the Detroit Election Commission will determine the results of Adam's challenge. Still ahead, the FDA could move to ban menthol cigarettes this week. Yep, the deadline the government faces and how soon that ban could take effect. She had like this whole separate life on her phone that we had. And so that is, it was just really disturbing. A mother says her teen daughter, who's now missing, was living a secret life. The warning she's now sending to other parents. But first, a local family has their door broken down in the middle of the night. What happened next and why the family believes they were targeted?